This video has been developed as an educational resource to illustrate best practices on how to evaluate images for alteration and aberrations to benefit the wider research community and in particular academic journal editors. This video has been created by an independent consultant under the auspices of STM and is an output from the STM Working Group on Image Alteration and Duplication Detection. This video is not an endorsement by any publisher or STM of the sufficiency and effectiveness of the illustrated steps for all cases of image aberration. Hello and welcome back. My name is Jana Christopher. I'm a data integrity analyst and have been working over many years for a variety of journals and publishers, screening images pre-publication and also assisting in the investigation of published material. In this second module of the series, we'll be looking specifically at screening blots. Although the examples shown in this video are all Western blots or immunoblots, the screening techniques introduced work equally well for northern blots, southern blots and agarose gels. Western blot images are relatively easy to modify and even reassemble, so it's worth inspecting them carefully. This video will introduce a basic toolbox for screening blot images effectively. The four most important techniques in Photoshop are adjustment of brightness and contrast, and here we can also use the levels tool, rotating, flipping, stretching and resizing selected areas in an image, solarizing images in order to see band outlines clearly and reveal details in the background noise, and overlay techniques including color overlays to verify potential duplications. Before you begin screening, it makes sense to ensure that the image quality is sufficient. Are any of the images affected by low resolution or compression? If so, they cannot be screened reliably. Although the figure file as a whole may have a resolution of 300 dpi, individual panels might be affected by compression artifacts, which can make it very difficult to analyze an image. Large pixel size or the typical blocky artifacts as seen across this example can be mistaken for traces of data alteration such as splice marks. Elements can sometimes look like they were dropped or pasted in, although they are genuine as such. The only problem may in fact be the image quality. If this is the case, you should request better images from the authors. Also look at individual panels and check whether any of the blots are too tightly cropped. There should be ample space above and below the bands of interest. Ensure that elements that might disagree with the hypothesis proposed in the study have not been cropped out. A frequently encountered problem associated with immunoblots and gels is over-contrasting. Adjusting the contrast in moderation is acceptable if it is applied equally across the entire image and is applied equally to controls. However, the contrast should not be adjusted to an extent where data disappear. Background noise should always remain visible and not be wiped out. Take note that this can also be used to hide a number of inappropriate data alterations such as splice marks or dropping in of elements. In this example, one band has been removed with the eraser tool, leaving a white trace. The contrast is then adjusted to a level where the entire background disappears, whilst the bands are retained. The eraser tool trace is no longer visible now. Once the image is saved with these alterations, it's impossible to reverse the changes by readjusting the contrast settings, as demonstrated here. We can darken the image, but we cannot make the signal reappear. Over-contrasted blots should raise a flag, and original images with visible background noise should be requested. Also watch out for contrast adjustment across images that are directly compared to each other. For images to be accurately compared, they should be acquired with identical settings, and any processing should also be identical. The two marked up panels on the right here have been contrast adjusted and the signals now appear much stronger relative to the ones on the left. This does not accurately represent what was observed in the experiment. Do whole panels look distorted, stretched, flattened or shortened? 
revert these actions. This will make it easier to screen the image. First, mark up the affected area and then use Command T to rotate, pull or stretch the image back into its original shape. This will let you see the individual bands more clearly and it will also allow you to inspect the background noise behind the bands. You should also pay attention to the number of bands in each panel. This must correspond where blot panels are directly compared to each other. For images with few or faint background features, we can use the Curves tool in Photoshop to solarize margins and edges to reveal morphological features such as outlines of individual bands and details in the background noise. Go to Image, Adjustment, Curves and adjust the settings to arrive at this shape. You may need to practice this a few times. There is no need to extract the individual blot panels first. You can simply open the figure file in Photoshop and then apply this adjustment to the entire image or a selected area. These settings work the same for all types of plots, but you may need to fine-tune for individual images. You can also record this series of tasks into a Photoshop action, which can be played back on any image file. An action is like an automated shortcut that lets you complete repetitive tasks with just a couple of mouse clicks. In addition, it may be useful to adjust the level setting to get the best view and tease out specific details. In the History window, you can return to any earlier point of the process and alternate between stages that may be useful for your analysis. Looking more closely at individual blot panels, you may detect vertical or horizontal hard straight lines where the background appears interrupted. These are generally digital cuts where an image section was either inserted or removed. Splice marks are often more easily detected in solarized images. If you do detect any potential splice marks, you should ask for raw data to trace exactly where the cuts were made and why. It is acceptable to juxtapose lanes that weren't adjacent in the gel, as long as the cut is declared and clearly marked. You should ensure that all parts of the assembled image come from the same blot and that the molecular weights are correct. In our example, this empty lane was removed by shifting the end section over to the left. But the two bands were also pulled downward, so now they are not shown at the correct molecular weight. This means that the image no longer shows the experimental result as it was observed. Also note that loading controls should generally be run on the same gel. This means that if the main blot has a cut, so should the control. If not, you should find out why. Next up, the clone tool. Cloning entails replacing the information in one part of a picture with information from another part. The basic clone stamp tool is rather easy to use and the results are often very difficult to spot. This is a brief demonstration of how the clone tool works in action. In this western blot image, one of the stronger bands from the row at the bottom is to cover or replace a weaker signal at the top. So the clone tool copies pixels from the source area and then pastes them over the target area. You can see that this is relatively easy to do. If some of the surrounding area like the smudge is included, a cloned area might look quite natural and therefore less detectable. It's also possible to pick up some empty background and clone it over a band and thereby effectively erase the signal. Cloning is generally only detectable if the cloned area comes from elsewhere within the same image. Pay close attention to the background noise and look out for repeating patterns. These might indicate use of the clone tool to add or obscure a band. Duplications such as this do not occur naturally and are usually a sign of digital alteration. They should always be investigated further. 
The next part is about duplications. Solarized images are easier to check and potential duplications will be more obvious. Whilst duplication of a whole panel might happen by mistake during figure assembly, duplications of individual bands within a blot are unlikely to be accidental. Watch out for similarly shaped bands and traces of cuts like this one here. And remember that duplications may be obscured by flipping, stretching, resizing and rotating. To verify duplications, we can use this quick overlay technique. In Photoshop, you can copy a selected area and then paste it back into the image. The copy will automatically be on a separate layer. You can then change the opacity of this layer to about 60% and move it over the potential duplicate. You can also flip, resize or distort the copy with the transform function. Once you've overlaid the two areas, you can turn the second layer on and off and compare them. This technique is a quick option that might give you a fairly good first indication. When comparing a group of several bands, overlays can also help to match alignment and distances between them. In this figure, it appears that a whole panel has been flipped and reused. To verify this, we can mark up one of the panels, make a copy and paste it back into the image. You can now see the second layer here on the right. Change the opacity of this layer to about 60%. Then move the copy closer to the potential match and use the transform function to flip the image. Now moving it on top of the suspected duplicate confirms that all the bands match in shape, as do the spaces between them. For a more precise analysis, we can also use Photoshop to perform a color overlay. In our example, there are two panels where at least some bands seem very similar, whilst others appear different. Again, it will help to solarize the image for a clearer view. Now mark and copy the first area of interest and then open a new file by using command N. It's a good idea to choose slightly larger dimensions for this new file to give yourself enough room to maneuver. Also make sure that you select RGB mode for the new file. Now you can see the individual channels here. Paste the first image into the red channel. Now return to your figure file and deselect the first panel. Mark and copy the suspected match and paste it into the green channel of your new file. Invert the blue channel. Now you can see an overlay of the two images. Move one of them around to work out if any parts of the two images match. You might again need to use the transform function to stretch, rotate, flip or resize at this point. Identical areas will show up as yellow or grey or black, whilst unique elements will stay red or green, as seen in the left part of this image here. When the manuscript you're investigating has several figures that contain blots, these should also be compared to each other to check for duplicates. It helps to tile the individual files in Photoshop and look for similarities. This is also very useful when comparing figures to raw data. So, summing up, when screening blots, 
try the following routine. Look at the original figures first, then solarize the images in Photoshop. You can use the Levels tool to fine-tune and the History tab to return to the original view if necessary. Zoom in closely and check each panel for hard edges and potential traces of splicing or dropped-in bands. Blurry patches might point to inappropriate data alteration. Duplicated areas in the background suggest cloning and should always be flagged. Also check whether any of the bands look like they don't belong. Compare similar looking blots side by side to look for potential duplicates and remember that these may be rotated, flipped, stretched or resized. Tile the images and look for whole panels or individual bands that might repeat across the figures. Duplications can be verified by using overlay techniques. And to help understand and clarify potential issues, raw data should be requested from the authors.